Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And these Fridays do come round really, really quickly. And um, yeah, it's a lovely sunny morning here at the Northeastern and we're at South Shield Station. And um, we're taking a break from Tyne Dock, only a small break, just to bring you something of that little bit different, something ideal for your um, layout and especially for beginners who want to have a go at scratch building. Now this space here um, behind the gents and the uh, station master's office is looking pretty sparse and um, I'm looking to put something there. I'm thinking as it's a nice sunny day, maybe uh, an ice cream parlour. Well, an ice cream parlour won't fit, so maybe a kiosk. I think a kiosk will look great there. So, let's head over to the bench. And this is what I had in mind, an ice cream kiosk. Um, now, Minchellas, um have been in South Shield since 1942. They have a, a ice cream parlour on Ocean Road. And um, yeah, I used to go in there quite often. Um, now and again on a, on a Saturday. Uh, when we were kids, uh, Mum used to drag us in there. Well, quite reluctantly really, because I wasn't keen on ice cream. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, so this is what I've got in mind and um, I haven't got room on the layout for the actual parlour well not yet but this would be a nice little feature to have to go in that spot that we just looked at so let's have a, a quick look at this photograph before we move on so we have the the serving hatch here and then just there on the side we've got the the door um, obviously with the staff to go in and out and um, what I like about this is its retro feel uh, the nice curved edges and uh, I think this will look a treat in that area so have you got your card glue and paste at the ready if you have then you can build one of these too right so it took me about 15 minutes to draw up this sketch um, as you can see you've got lots of different um, information there on the heights, widths and depths um, for all aspects of this build including overhangs which is here we've got 1.5 mil overhang just over here underneath this uh, ridge and then we've got um, the depth of the step so you can take a note into that 52 mil in width and the actual building itself is 49 mil so we've got the information so now we can start building this but what I will do is I'll post this picture on my community page uh, for anybody who is interested in making one of these and it doesn't have to be Minchella's uh, I mean Newcastle had their own ice cream parlour which was Mark Tony's um, obviously every town has got an ice cream parlour or kiosk we can even just call it Mr Wimpy's or whatever whatever you like but um, there you go, so there's the information. Now it's time to get on with the build. Now, with this build, we're gonna start with the base. Uh, I'm making it out of two mil card. If you haven't got two mil card, you can glue two pieces of one mil card together to get uh, the depth, because we need the depth here to allow the, the walls to stick to. So as per drawing, I'm gonna cut this piece at 52 millimeters I'm going to leave the line on and then we're going to cut it down to the width which is uh, 22 minus the thickness of the 0.5 carb we're going to put on the walls so we're going to have to trim that down to 21. So it is quite a small um, little building. 
I don't get we've got to cut this down even further yet for the the step. Now I haven't done a measurement for the door just as yet, uh, not until um, I've done all the other calculations. So we'll just cut this down to the correct width, 21 millimeters we said. And uh, then we can work out for the step. So there we go, so there's the, the basic footprint, it's quite narrow, but once you get the walls on it'll, it'll come out a bit more. So the step, uh, so the main width of the building is 49, so we need 3mm for the step, so what we'll do, we'll come in 3mm, mark it with a pencil. Now door widths is normally between uh, 10 and 13 millimeters. So what we'll do, we'll make the actual doorstep 10 millimeters. So what we're going to do is work out the center of that. So we got 21, so we want 10.5 to the center. Then we've got to come out from there. If we go 5 milli this side, that's plenty for the step. That makes that smack in the middle there. So we've got a nice big concrete step there. I've probably made it a little bit wider now, going to the outside the pencil line. So that doesn't matter. So there we are, we've got our doorstep. So we'll trim that to size. Now we've got around the corners over as well, so we've got to make a slight pattern here. So there's our doorstep. So there's our base. At the same time that I'm making the base, I'm making the top, which I'm going to make out a 2mm card again. And what I'm using now is a 5mm washer to round off the corners and uh, this, the top will then be the template for other things that will be going on with this build, especially the counter which will go inside um, of the booth and uh, yeah We'll just round these corners off and hopefully they'll match the corners that we've already now that you've cut the top it's well worth checking to make sure that you've got the radiuses top and bottom matching and flush all round otherwise your, your, your walls might not line up so if you, you check that and you're happy with it then we can move on to the next stage so I'm using ordinary card for this uh, 0.5 um, thick I think it is. Um, the reason being is just so that we can fold it around these edges. Anything thicker than that and we'll probably end up with creases. So a nice good quality card for the walls. You want a piece of card 32 millimeters in height and 145 millimeters in length and then what we do then is we mark it into segments if you like so what we'll do we'll start with 25 mil and then 21 millimeters and then 49 millimeters which is the front and then we do the same again 21 millimeters and then here we'll leave a little bit more, we'll leave about uh, 29 millimeters because once it's folded round we might need to trim a little bit off um, for joining the back of the wall together. So we've got to now very lightly draw our lines on because we want to be able to rub them off later on otherwise it'll come through the paint. So 
I've gone 45 from the edge there and 45 from the edge there and put a very very faint line down there and we'll do the same there mark our 49 and then join them lines them dots up now now that we have our front this is where we can cut out for the serving hatch and um, and then we can then work around the building um, folding it around this corner cut out for the doorstep but we're not going to cut out for the door I think we'll make the door and then glue it on the side and then put a frame around the door um, to make it look like the door is a door if you know what I mean I have marked out for the, the serving hatch as you can see so we're only 9 millimeters from the top 13 millimeters from the bottom of the of the ground here and uh, this is your, your front fascia 49 mil so we've come in 24.5 24.5 put in the center line and now this is ready to be cut out um, yeah but I might what I might do is I might keep that piece that I cut out to use as a shutter as you'll see so I'm just trying not to go over the lines but trying to keep within the lines So that should now pop out. So now we have our serving counter. And what I might do is I might use that instead of having a roller shutter door, I might use that to come out like that. If I do that, you can see what I mean. So maybe just scribe some lines on that, paint that green. We'll see, but I'll hang on to that. So now we've got to work out where the, the doorstep is because we need to notch out for that. So if we put that line in line with the edge of the, the base and then we can fold it around and work out where we need to cut out. I think it's roughly about five millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll mark a pencil line there for five millimeters off that line. See the other side, you don't have to worry about the other side. So we'll just see what that looks like. Put the pencil line in line with the build, uh, with the base, you see. Fold it round and then you can see if that, as it comes around, yeah, so that will miss. So we'll measure the width of the doorstep which is about 10 millimeters we'll call it 10.5 give it a little bit of clearance 10.5 so it's quite a narrow building this and then we need to mark two millimeters just for the thickness of the card and then this will just wrap around the base once it's all cut out so the step will be the dating point for all the other folds and we can see where it matches up at the back when it's all done. So the doorstep's now cut out and I've just checked it and it looks like that's going to work as you can see and I've also radiused the corner there, the first corner. So what I'm going to do now is put the 3 mil drill bit I've got here on the pencil line there. So if I put that there like that and line the drill up, drill bit up with the centre of that pencil line, we can now fold this side, fold it around the drill bit and then just roll it 
backwards and forwards nice and tight so we get a nice crisp fold and then that pencil line there should be in the center of the bend then we can offer that up hopefully it should fold around to both edges So it's almost there. Got to tweak that corner a little bit more. Come round a little bit more, but we'll get there. Now, once you've got your front folds uh, bent round and you're quite happy with them, it's time to work on the back ones. Now I've done this side. What I did there is once I got across the, the doorstep as it were I put a little pencil line on the inside and then I used the drill bit again to fold at that corner hence why we've got the radius there and all I've got to do is the same with this one once I'm happy with the corner here make sure it's flush with the bottom edge bring it around the corner and where you see the center of the radius that's where you put your pencil mark and put your drill bit on there making sure that when that piece of card comes round that it folds level with the edge there that gives you a nice straight fold up at 90 degrees and then just rock the drill bit backwards and forwards and once you've got those done you can now work out where your join is going to be at the back and then you can cut it accordingly or you could just let it overlap but I think I will just trim that to size I will find out where the center is mark it across the top on both sides and trim both of them so that they match but uh, not just yet and there we have our walls done. Make sure that the back is going to meet. What I've done, I've just put the top in, so the top and the bottom is in, but it's loose. And then we can see where we want to put the joint. I want to put the joint in the center there. So I'll mark that as the top in the center of there. So I'll just put a pencil line across the top. And then that's where we need to cut the card. Once you're 100% sure that the, the joint is going to meet, then you're ready to glue the walls to the base. So I'm just going to run up a little bit of glue around here. And then we can fit the walls. And we should meet somewhere in the middle. All right, you will have a, a joint at the back, but you're not going to relatively see that. But you can always cover that up with a, a downpipe or maybe uh, some cable trunking. If though they're going to have, obviously, going to have um, cables going to this building. It's for the fridges and the and the lighting. So there we go. So that's gluing together nicely and we've almost got the joint. Don't we just got to get that flush with the bottom. Right, 
Right, so we can now leave that to dry. So what we have here, we have some backgrounds to go inside of the kiosk and um, I've made sure that they were long enough to go around the whole of the building, if you know what I mean. Um, so these are about 120 millimeters wide by about 40 millimeters in depth, which is just the ideal size to go inside here. Yeah, and not only that, it'll cover the joint up on the inside. Um, but before you do that, just make sure you mark a 2 mil pencil line all the way around the inside because the roof will then sit inside once the back scene is glued in place. So I think I'm going to opt for this one because it's got menus and uh, all sorts of prices and things like that. So I'm going to put this one into the kiosk. Like I said, you can download these off the internet and just trim them to fit your building. I have now trimmed the back scene to length and width. And what I've done there is I've just rolled the corners over to about halfway down the, the straight that's going to go in the back here. And I've done the same to the other side. Now this is going to help so that when you come to put it in the edges stay away from the sides until you're ready to glue it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some PVA wood glue along the back first and do that just in there. So I'll glue the back together first question is do this a little bit at a time so I should start with the back so I can now drop that in and I've marked a pencil line there so it lines up with the joint that we've got here so we can put that side in first push it right down so it touches the, the floor and then do the same to the other side and then just gently push the joints together. And the good thing about this back scene, it does or it will hold the joint together. And just make sure it's nice and flat. Right and where it's folded we'll just unfold that, just pull that bit back and then put some glue in the back of there and then glue the rest. You could actually use the handle of the brush to push that into the corners and down to the floor and as you can see when you look in there it gives that a little bit of depth in the detail I'm now making the door the door is 13 millimeters wide by 26 millimeters high um, so I'm adding a frame as well as the door so I'm coming in roughly about a millimetre and a half, just move it all over a little bit more, uh, to make a frame. So I'm only drawing this on, and then I'll just put a little line across the top there. And then we'll just glue this piece on and paint it later. So this is going to be the door. So what I'll do is I'll just draw some lines as if there was a corrugated door. And then we shall glue this on. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ledge underneath the serving hatch. That's what that little piece of card is there for. 
So that will be glued onto there, like so. What we need to do next is stiffen up this booth. Um, so I'm going to put in the counter now, uh, which hopefully might fix the lower half here where it's starting to, you can see it's starting to distort a little bit. So we'll do that next. Um, I'm using the roof template. I'm going to draw around the corners there because when I lift that up, you can see I've already pre marked it ready for cutting out. So I shall now cut these corners and paint this white and ready to go into the kiosk. But before I put it in the kiosk, I'm going to add one little detail to it. To make the ice cream machine, I'm going to use this three pin plug protector. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a little piece of this off, roughly about 8 to 10 millimeters off. Try and cut it nice and square. And what I like about this is I want to try and keep the clouded um, glass color as it were and then paint the inside white and then paint the outside silver and put on the front there a, a little um, tap made from copper wire and then so you can pull the lever and get the ice cream out. Now this will be the only piece of detail uh, I'll be putting inside the kiosk. And this is what I was hoping to achieve with the three pin plug protector. As you can see I've folded a little bit of copper wire 90 degrees and then folded it back on itself like you see there and then bent another little piece up at 45 degrees which now gives us two taps. So what I'm going to do now is paint the inside white but not all the way up to the top just a, a little bit so it looks like there's some ice cream in there and I'm just using some gloss white paint so I'm just going to paint inside if I can get the brush in there which I can but not go all the way to the top I'll try and paint it so it's flat as well it's not going to be easy trying to get the paint around them taps It's easy for the back, but uh, you can see what I'm trying to do. I don't want to go all the way up to the top because I want to leave a little bit of that clear plastic. Well, that didn't quite work out the way that I wanted it to, so now we have a full machine of ice cream, but I'll be able to have control of the paint on the outside. So what I'm going to do now, just above the taps, I'm going to paint it silver all the way down to the base. I have now installed the counter along with the ice cream machine and that has stiffened up the whole front of the kiosk and uh, we have a server in there serving the ice cream and it's got a little red bow tie on. Um, another thing I've made out of that three pin plug protector is a fridge which will go in the back. All I've got to do is give it a silver handle and I'll put that in as well to the left of the uh, ice cream server. Now we have the roller shutter um, casing if you like on. Notice how I've left it slightly to one side because that's where the motor would be for to drive the roller shutter up and down. So that's the roller shutter and I've put the rails in ready. 
So now it's a case of putting the roof on. So now it's just a case of painting the whole building matte white. But I'm going to leave three mil around the top, around the top there before the green strip, um, like we have in the photograph. So this is this matte white is just slightly off white probably because it's old paint but I like the texture it's giving moving on a little bit I have now painted the baseline black which goes around the bottom of this kiosk uh, the door step I've done that and I've painted a little tiny handle on the door so the next thing to do is to put a green stripe around the top now um, so what I've done earlier on I painted this card a dark green which is a semi matte 364 so what I'll do I'll cut a 3 mil strip off that and wrap that right around the whole building and uh, once that's done I will add this little piece of um, sandpaper 120 grit um, so to represent the asphalt and that will then just about complete the kiosk and what really brings this little kiosk to life is all these little well I wouldn't call them decals because they're not decals they're just little prints that I've downloaded off the internet and like the little ice cream you can see on the kiosk and, um, and that's all I've done is I've got them as small as you can and then print them off obviously the lettering um, I did in Word and uh, it's just so easy to do a little bit of glue there for this ice cream cone to go here I just use the q-tip just to maneuver it in place where you want it to be try not to linger too much on the print because the ink might run With all my little um, ice creams added and all the lettering, this kind of uh, makes it stand out now like a proper ice cream kiosk. But there's still one thing missing. Um, yeah, I think I might go overboard here and actually put a huge ice cream on the top. <laughs> Uh, like you see in those uh, American ones. Yeah, I think I'll do that. In order to create the cone of the ice cream, we need a circle. But before we do that, we need to cover a piece of paper in super glue, which then toughens the paper up. And that's what we want. We want the paper to be really tough. So. I've used a, a penny washer, I've drawn round it and I've drawn round the centre of the penny washer. I then put the pencil in the centre of the small circle, put the rule up against it and then draw the line. So I'm now in a process of cutting around this circle. I have already split it there and the idea is to turn this circle into a cone shape. 
So in the end it worked out about half a circle we had to lose. And here is our cone. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue that in the centre of this kiosk. Obviously um, the real ones would have had bracket on so I'll make up a little V bracket as well so it gives it extra strength and then I'll fill it with some twin pack glue. Right so as you can see I've stuck the cone onto the top of the kiosk and I've added a little tiny piece of cardboard which gives it a little extra support so I'm waiting for the super glue to really get a hold of that and uh, keep it in place but in the meantime I'm mixing up some epoxy resin to fill the cone up now this epoxy I'm using is epoxy 5 um, and it's quite good stuff but it can be quite runny so I'm gonna have to keep stirring it stirring it until it goes almost off and then just as it's about to go off I shall then fill the cone because I want to create the ice cream in the cone if you know what I mean so I'll just keep on stirring this because at the moment that is still too, way too runny so while I'm waiting for that to, to harden I'm going to cut a little piece of this uh, toothpick and create a flake so I'm going to put a flake in there as well obviously once uh, this stuff starts going off not quite there yet still see I want it to be able to to stand otherwise I won't be able to get that uh, ice cream look I'll just end up running over the sides and we don't want that Still not, still not there yet. So I'm now beginning to pour the resin into the cone. I'll give this a bit, a little bit longer. Still not looking at what's happening there it's going flat so I'll just leave this a little bit longer right so it took a while um, waiting for that to um, go off so I can manipulate it and as you can see it looks like I've got the perfect ice cream there on top of the kiosk I've managed to put in a, a small piece of of the toothpick to um, represent a flake so once this is painted and the, the roof is weathered then this will be finished and about half an hour later this resin is ready to paint it's still a bit sticky but it's not going to move anymore So I shall just paint this white. Using a gloss white of course and uh, I used a mixture of gloss 69 yellow and matte 63 for the cone.
There you go, all I've got to do now is paint the flake. And with the flake now painted up and the roof now weathered, I think that is it. It's, it's done. I think at some point I probably will add uh, an LED. Um, I can drill a hole in the bottom and but I, for the moment I don't think we need it because we can see everything that's going on in there. Right, let's see what it looks like on the layout. The paint's not even dry and already they're queuing up for ice creams. I think it fits in that spot quite nicely. Now it is evening here up in the loft, hence why I've got the, the lights on in the station. But I definitely think we need an LED in that kiosk, because it does look dark and gloomy. Um, we can still see little bits and pieces inside, but uh, I can always bring an LED up through the floor um, of the kiosk, because I know where everything is, so I shouldn't be able to hit anything. But uh, yeah, now then, as for this being a first time project for um, you guys who want to have a go at scratch building, I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's worth a try. Um, well, you've seen how I've built it, and uh, yeah, all the instructions are there. So why not have a go? But what really makes it for me is a huge ice cream cone on the top. It really does, well, make it pop, as it were. Right. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there. Let me know in the comments. I might find somewhere else um, on the layout for it. Because it, uh, as you know, social is getting pretty busy with bits and pieces. So, I don't know. I'm beginning to like it there. Right, I think that's all from me this week. Um, while you're watching this I'll probably carry on with the canopy supports because uh, they're still not finished. So, until next time, stay safe everybody and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.